You might have been hearing a lot about this game called Elden Ring that's been getting a lot of hype, and maybe you aren't fully sure what the big deal is. Well, what if I told you that Elden Ring represents, or at least looks like it's going to be, the current pinnacle of a recent and evolving genre of video games? Elden Ring is made by From Software, who have a long and storied history of games you've probably never heard of, but they're most famous for making Sekiro, Bloodborne, Demon Souls, which recently got a remake, and of course, the Dark Souls series. All these games by FromSoft, along with Elden Ring, have been pulled together into what most fans now call the Souls series. All of these games share a number of similar gameplay elements, and these games have become so popular and so influential that a lot of other dev teams have taken their own attempt at it. So many that it has spawned a whole new genre of game that has been dubbed Souls-likes. Now, this genre isn't super well-defined, so it can be hard to tell what is or isn't a Souls-like game, but there are a few particular things to look out for. Number one, a single currency that you gain from enemies that is used for almost everything, from buying items to leveling up. When you die, you drop any that is unspent, and if you fail to pick it up before your next death, it is lost forever. Number two, a place to rest that restores your health and certain other resources, but also respawns all defeated enemies with some exceptions, namely bosses and mini-bosses. Number three, an intertwined open world in which you need to explore yourself in order to find the way ahead, as well as unlock shortcuts and discover secrets, which can range from a simple treasure to something incredibly important to the plot. This trait alone makes Souls likes very similar to the Metroidvania genre. There's quite a bit of overlap. Number four, managing some kind of resource that allows you to take certain actions, which can take many forms, but is most often your stamina, which replenishes quickly, but is the resource used for both offensive and defensive actions, requiring you to be careful with being too aggressive in combat. Finally, number five, a progression system that allows you to play and build your characters in many different ways. Other people may say this list includes rolling, swamp levels, breaking pots, but these five are the most important ones, in my opinion. Most of the time, if a game has three or more of these features, and sometimes two, I'll probably consider the game a Souls-like. Let's take a look at a few well-known Souls-like games. There's Code Vein, which definitely has a distinct graphical style, but also allows you to equip many different special skills called gifts, and I don't have time to go into details, but it is similar to spells in Dark Souls theoretically, but works in a very different way. There's also The Surge and its sequel, which allow you to target particular parts of an enemy in order to get different gear, a versatile implant system, and a combat drone with its own set of uses, all while being in a sci-fi setting for a slew of unique enemies and settings. Remnant from the Ashes is one that has a stronger focus on combat with ranged weapons, which is to say, guns. and that's what it does different. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order has some tedious backtracking, but like, it's a Star Wars Souls-like game. You're a Jedi. I don't see what part of that doesn't sound absolutely awesome. And of course, there are a number of Souls-likes that are 2D instead of 3D. Hollow Knight is the one most have probably heard of, with strong world building, simple but still versatile combat, and some truly incredible art. Other 2D Souls-likes include the more traditional Salt and Sanctuary, the fast-paced Dead Cells, the brutal and gory Blasphemous, and the moody and dystopian Unsighted. And these are just the well-known ones. There is an absolute ocean of Souls-like games out there. There's a guy on YouTube called Iron Pineapple that has a video series dedicated to showing off the more obscure one, and I'd highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun to watch, and you'll learn about some cool games. So, my point being, FromSoft has managed to inspire an entire genre into the world of game developers, and Elden Ring is looking to take Dark Souls and not only add new things, but refine what's already there. A massive open world that makes it like a Dark Souls Breath of the Wild, summoning a horse that you can explore and fight stuff with, stealth and jumping working like it did in Sekiro, a day-night cycle, a crafting system, everything just looks so good, and I'm super excited to play it. And so hopefully that was a fun little lesson on what Elden Ring's origins are and what legacy that those origins have had and why people are so excited for it. That's all I have to share. And if you're jumping into Elden Ring with me, I'll see you then. The game doesn't come out for two days, so until then, I'll be playing Dark Souls 3 with a mod that changes which enemies are where. This is a good idea. Hey, I think I've changed my mind. This might have been a bad idea.